On the weekend of September 15 and 16, in the year 1962, Salem Church celebrated the 115th anniversary of its founding. And the theme was this, God has been here these 115 years, and it has been well with us. In answering why should we celebrate 115th anniversary, the people made this declaration of their faith. Why have a 115th anniversary? Certainly not to pat ourselves on the back, but rather we have been confounded by a continual awareness that God has been among us. God's mighty acts of covenant and Christ have stirred the people of Salem through discouraging periods. Always present, our Lord has lifted us through six wars, countless economic panics, dry religious periods, and individual and family calamities. Continually, it has been well for the people of peace called Salem. This is a time of thanksgiving because year by year, we live under grace. So today we're celebrating the 175th birthday of Salem. And I believe that we can make a similar statement of faith. We could add more blessings in the year since the 115th anniversary as well as more challenges, including the pandemic. And just out of curiosity, how many of you were here or remember the 115th anniversary? Anybody? Uh, 1962. Um, I think it's important for us to review our history occasionally. And so in preparation for today, I spent time reading everything that I could find here at the church on the history of Salem. We remember that the name Salem is derived from the word for peace. But what is the essence of Salem. What makes Salem Church who we are today? So I'm going to share with you some of my reflections um, in the reading of the history of listening to you all tell stories of being with you, my experience of you in the last three years. And I've selected a number of pictures to share and for each picture I show, there's probably 50 more like it, right? And I noticed that some things we don't have pictures of. And I also wanted to honor the privacy of our young people, our children, and our youth. And so um, there are limited pictures of them. And there may be things that you all would add or talk back to me about if I were to give you that opportunity in terms of how I am presenting the characteristics of Salem. But my prayer and my hope is that you will receive my reflections as an expression of my deep love and appreciation for you Salem Church. So Salem is proud of its heritage and grateful for the past. God continues to build on our precious foundation of faith. And as I thought about the biblical record of the early church of Jesus with his disciples and thinking about my experience of Salem the quality at the center of all is love. And so I selected our key verse for today from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 35, a teaching from Jesus on the night of the Last Supper, 
when he said to those gathered around him, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So this is our challenge, to live out in tangible ways the love of God. And so our love is for God, for Jesus Christ. We have love for one another. And then we are to take that love and not keep it to ourselves, but share it with the community and the world. Jesus himself is our model for how we are to love. So I believe that love is a descriptive quality of Salem, but it's also our ideal, something for which we strive, that we open our lives, that God might perfect the divine love within us and among us. Our scripture lesson today, pretty short, Karen, you can thank me later, um, was from the letter of First John. And it really explains some of the process by which God's love is made known through us. And I, particularly in reading the history of Salem, I found this emphasis on action throughout the history. A report from the year 1971 included this statement, we need more action and less talk. Sounds like something we might have said uh, last week in a meeting, right? But in scripture, we're told to show our love, to love indeed. And so we express, we show our love in many ways. And we are grounded in our worship life together, brought together for our common love of God and Savior. This is from Christmas Eve uh, 2019. I think Keith took this picture from the loft. But we come together with joy, and we're happy to be together, at least most of the time, right? But you show by the way you greet one another and speak with each other and linger afterwards to talk with one another, that we take joy from being together. So I want to just lift up a few aspects of our Christ-like love. This coloring page was done for our first responders and our medical personnel during the early months of the pandemic. And it symbolizes for me the appreciative nature of Salem. Often I hear from you all the words, thank you, expressing your appreciation for the work, the ministry that I do. We do appreciate one another and we appreciate those in our community who give of themselves. It wasn't just something that we did uh, during the pandemic. Something, Salem has a history of being involved in the community and of being appreciative of our community. And most of all, we appreciate God's blessings. Now, uh, Sue regularly changes our bulletin boards and I, I warned her that I take pictures of them and that they come back at various times. And this was one, uh, I think a couple years ago, a thankful heart is a happy heart. And I think that really describes Salem. We're happy because we are thankful as a congregation. And so that appreciation is an important part of who we are. And a second quality of Salem is that we are hardworking. And you can see this throughout the history of the church, through times of economic challenges, uh, change in the growth of the neighborhood. It was interesting to read about how the church had to respond, growing from uh, 
just Upper Falls and Kingsville, and then it's the suburbia spread, you know, more people moving in, and then the development and establishment of Joppa Town, knowing that they would reach out and move even further. When you look at the building campaigns for this building, the educational building, the expansion of the kitchen, all the things that have been done, you read how money had to be raised, work had to be done, and Salem did it, rising to the challenge. Now, Bruce had to give me lessons about this, but the motto that I would use for Salem is this, get her done. He's, now, that goes against everything my speech teachers taught me, but you all understand what I'm saying, right? Um, get her done, that's what we do. We see something needs to be done, and it's done. Whether it's weeding the garden or whatever it is, it gets done. And this is a picture of the hard work that you all give whenever and wherever it is needed. And a lot of you uh, like to remain anonymous about what you do. And I can appreciate that. But I want to say publicly thank you to everyone. And I appreciate what it is that you do. In the last two and a half years, more than ever, we've had to rely on God's grace to rework even the most basic activities of being the church. And by the grace of God, we've done it. Salem is resilient. And there are lots of examples, and I want to begin with Vespers. When I first mentioned the idea of having an outdoor Vesper service, I, I could see the looks on people's faces. Like, you know, it's like, okay, well, and a couple people said, let's do it, right? Let's do it. Let's try it. And I thought, okay, let's try it. And I don't think any of us could have anticipated the blessings of that opportunity. And we've made it something that is uniquely Salem. And we met in the dark, in the cold. The lowest temperature was 20 degrees, literally. That was a very quick service. <laughs> you all might like that aspect. And we've met when it's 80, 90 degrees. Now, here's another example of worshiping from home. It's opened up so many possibilities for us that we never would have dreamed possible. We never could have anticipated. And I am so grateful for the people that we are able to include because we have an option that people can worship from home. If you've read my article in the newsletter, I reminded you all that if you're away on vacation and have access to the internet, you can tune in for worship, right? Worship with us, participate. Or if you're away and you want to catch up on the messages, they're all recorded and posted for you. And I would encourage us to continue to support our online options. And this leads me to mention the next quality of Salem, the, the dog watching, um, is humor and spontaneity. Okay, you can laugh. Maybe you, you need me to tell you a joke? But we love to laugh, right? We enjoy one another. Now, if you were here, it was just about three years ago when Pastor Fred and I participated together in a time of worship to mark our pastoral transition. And you may remember that some members of the congregation came forward and gave me gifts. Now, this was one that still is in my office. That's the carpet in my office. If you can't make out what that is, that's my uh, weight. And Bob gave that to me and told me that I would need to work out in order to be ready for frying oysters. <laughs> and so here I am in November of 2019. You saw that my workouts prepared me to fry oysters. And I know that someone has the complete video of me frying and dancing and we were having a good time. 
but I remember that and some other things that I was given that day. But one of my very favorite gifts came in the offering plate one Sunday. And I want to say, thank God for Michelle. And I was um, sort of teased by one of the counters that said, everything that comes in the plate needs to come to them. <laughs> but you all see that I love giving the chocolates to our children. And even though I don't eat chocolate anymore, I love sharing it with others. But you have to love a church where you go to get the plates and there is chocolate in the offering for you. Love it. So children deserve a special place in our celebration of Salem. And when you read the history, you see that this has been true through the years, and it certainly will remain so. The fourth quality of Salem and the last that I want to highlight is our commitment to one another and to reaching out beyond ourselves. We often refer to Salem as a family, and I want to encourage us to remember that there is always room for more in our family. We cherish all of the people, whatever their age. We cherish our young people, the children, youth, and young adults. We cherish our elders. And even the middle-aged people like me, there's a place for us too. Each one cherished, honored, and loved. And we extend our hospitality, right? Just stop by the kitchen. And we increase our witness through love. And we aren't afraid to try new things and to add to our traditions. And this was our first Star Sunday. We want to be good neighbors and to provide an inviting witness in our community. And we also take seriously our call to show the love of Christ to those beyond the walls of our building. This is our first collection of cookies for the Board of Child Care. We sent, there's a food theme here, isn't there? It's pretty obvious, but we sent cookies for first responders. We've sent school supplies for area students and provided meals for those in need, whether individuals in the congregation or people in the community. There are just so many ways that we share our love. This was um, our celebration of our college students and providing nurture for our young adults in college extends our love for those who have grown, grown up as a part of the Salem family. And I really want to give credit to Judy for all her commitment to our young people. For so many years, her deep commitment inspires us. And so we share our fun by remembering and connecting more than those who may be with us at any given physical gathering. We made backpack tags and mailed them to the college students. We sent them to teachers in the community as well as providing them for those in our congregation. Now, the community we are building together goes far beyond what any one of us experiences. And this next picture shows a group that I was invited to join when I first came here. And I'm so grateful to be a part of the aerobics group, which some of you may or may not know meets. We're back in person now in our building. The next picture is a symbol of a small act of kindness offered to me. Someone knew that I would be here for long hours over dinner and called and said, can I bring you dinner? And this is what arrived, all beautifully done and packaged. And a number of you have invited me to share meals with you. Small acts of kindness powerfully communicate the love of Christ. Now, I can't capture every 
act of kindness, and I don't even know but a small portion. But these are reminders that we are called to love like Jesus. Our goal as Salem is to love like Jesus. This is who we are and who we are meant to be. This is God's vision and purpose for us. And the love we share comes from the heart of God. Ultimately, Salem is home. Starting from the little church on the hill, as the building, the first building was called, to where we are today, whether in person or online, or in the community, we are called to proclaim God's love. On my first Sunday here, the choir gave a command performance, I guess you'd call that. And some of you may remember that the song selected is the song Home um, by Philip Phillips. And I took the words of that song and put them on my bulletin board. They're still there. But you have truly made Salem my home. And in gratitude, I dedicate myself to continue working with you to love like Jesus. And by the power of God at work within us, may the world know us by our love. So for me, home, I wrote this little equation, home equals history plus, plus love plus future, all united in Christ. Our worship on Pentecost Sunday, receiving our confirmation class, receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, it is the Spirit that propels us into the future through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we celebrate and thank God for Salem. Amen.